Hi everybody, thank you for being here. This is your cosmic update for April. We're going to talk about the new moon in Aries um, and a little bit of the energy that's surrounding it. So if it's your first time here, thank you so much for being here. Be sure to like and subscribe. You can also find me on social media at MM Healing Services or at The Autistic Astrologer on Facebook and on YouTube. So when we talk about this moon, it is happening on April 11th. It happens at 731 Pacific Standard Time and 1031 Eastern Standard Time. And it's going to be happening at 22 degrees of Aries. So there's a lot happening in Aries for this moon. There's an Aries stellium. So the sun's going to be there. The moon's going to be there, obviously, for the new moon. And then we also have Mercury and Venus there. And Chiron is still hanging out at beginning degrees of Aries as well. So a lot of Aries energy. We know from previous videos that Aries is our first sign of the zodiac. So not only is it a new moon, but it's a new zodiacal year as well. So a lot of newness in the energy just straight off. So new moons are all about planting seeds, all about starting new intentions, all about making new plans, starting new you know projects and adventures. So this newness is really, really, really coming into the air. We're going to feel this shift happening, things starting to take off. Um, we're activating a cycle from 2020 that was the Mars retrograde cycle. So this moon is happening at 22 degrees Aries. And that was the same spot. Those are the same um, degrees that Merc or that Mars retrograded in 2020. So if you weren't around for those videos, you can catch some of them on my um, on my YouTube page. So if you want to go back and watch them, fine. If not, basically, Mars retrograde was holding us back in 2020 from getting things done. And now this new moon is going to reactivate that same spot in our charts. And so we're going to finally feel like we can start getting some things done in the avenues where we've really felt held back. And that's going back to um, September, October of 2020. So um, that activation cycle is getting started. Every time we have a new moon, it's a closing of last year's new moon. And last year's new moon that happened in Aries was conjunct Chiron, the wounded healer. So a year ago during this new moon, we activated an internal healing cycle. That is going to start to come um, to an ending here or the next chapter here as we move on. So think back to a year ago when we had the new moon in Aries. Consider what you've been working on healing over the last year. Collectively, we've been dealing with you know, the pandemic, we've been dealing with racial and systemic oppression in multiple um, different communities. And so there's been a lot of healing happening. But for this instance, look internally to what you have been healing in your life, in your emotions, in your, you know, ancestry, um, and, and see what is, um, you know, coming to, to a close or finishing a chapter in your healing cycle. Um, so also, it's going to um, close out from the last new moon. So cycles and cycles and cycles in astrology. So we have the cycle of Mars retrograde in 2020 being activated. We have last year's new moon in Aries being activated. We have last month's new moon in Pisces being um, activated. And so there's a lot of activations happening. And Aries is our activator. So a lot of fast energy going on. This sun or this moon is ruled by Mars. Mars is the ruler of Aries and Mars is in fast Gemini. So additionally, more fast energy that's happening surrounding this moon. So this is going to be a great moon to find clarity, to make plans, to start tiptoeing um, into action of the plans that we have made. Um, really take advantage of any of the motivation or initiating energy that is there. What you want to be aware of in yourself and in others is this burst into energy, right? You know, when we felt felt held back and then all of a sudden it's like the gates are open and then it's swarmed. That's what we want to look out for in the collective is just making sure that we're not going full throttle and not able to see um, other perspectives and the things that we've learned over the last year. So the whole 
point in retrogrades, and we're going to talk about the Mars retrograde because that's what's being activated in this moon. The whole point in, in retrogrades is to re things, reassess, replan, rethink, reactivate. So we want to make sure that we are now embodying the lessons that we've learned through the last year, through the last six months, through the last month even. We're new people today than we were just yesterday. And so we want to make sure as the floodgates open and we start to feel the energy and the motivation to move and get things done and initiate plans, we want to make sure that we're doing so, staying grounded and staying aware and embodying the things that we've learned over, you know, our lifetime. And so it's a great time to initiate plans and also make sure that you stay aware and you continue to check in with yourself and you don't allow the motivation to sweep you away. Um, there's another main aspect. Well, there's a lot of aspects happening with this, but what we're going to talk about is the aspect between Venus and Pluto. So Venus, our lover, and Pluto, our underworld, are forming a cardinal square. And when we have squares, we have tension. We have, when we think about a square, this corner, so we have somebody here and somebody here, and it's really hard to see around that corner to see somebody else's perspective. So when we talk about squares in, in astrology, that's that tension, misunderstanding, not being able to see another perspective is a lot of times what a square will bring. Anxious tension, um, frustration, delays, all of these things fall with, within um, the square energy. And when we have it in cardinal signs, which is going to be Aries, Cancer, Libra, or Capricorn, they are our activators, our initiators, our leaders, the ones who want to get things done. And so we have two things wanting to get things done, but not doing it the same way. So we have Venus and Aries, and then we have Pluto and Capricorn. Okay, so... What that's doing is we're having a Pluto, which is death and rebirth, total transformation, um, a, a shift in power, a transfer, a transfer in power is happening with Venus, which is our love, our relationship, our passions, the beauty in our lives. And so there's going to be the shift of control or this transformation of deep rooted power and, and structural energy that's going to be at play here. And this could, you know, formulate in so many different ways. But for instance, Venus is very often tied to relationships, also finances, but we're going to stick with relationships in this example. So Venus relationships, Aries, right? So she's wanting to be in charge. She's wanting to activate. She's seeing um, all of this like confidence within herself. She's wanting to be seen, wanting to heard, wanting to get things done. Pluto in Capricorn, old structures, old patterns, the patriarchy, right? Um, feeling controlled by others. So Venus, when she's squaring Pluto in Capricorn, she may feel that she's lost control, that she's not in control of whatever this relationship is. And there may be tension or friction here that causes Venus to recognize that there's a shift, a power shift, a transformation in control of these relationships that needs to happen. So that is just one way that that uh, Venus square Pluto can, can show up. Um, and it's all going to be based on your chart. So for this aspect, you're going to be wanting to look at around 26 degrees cardinal signs in your chart to see where this action is playing out. Find the house that Aries rules and the house that Capricorn rules and see how those things, those topics are squaring off in your life. Um, you can always reach out to me if you have questions about this or need guidance. I'll help you with the time and space that I have. You can also schedule sessions or readings with me directly on Facebook. You can find me at MM Healing Services or at The Autistic Astrologer. You can also comment on any of the videos that I post and, you know, we'll chat with the time and space that I have. So that... That aspect with Venus and Pluto is going to be pretty significant um, during this, this moon cycle. Mars, again, 
um, is active in Gemini and it's ruling this um, this uh, moon because it it rules Aries. Mars rules Aries and the moon is in Aries. So Mars is the ruler of the moon and it is forming a nice sextile between Mars and Gemini, the moon and Jupiter in Aquarius. So one of the main aspects that I'm going to be watching in April is the trine between Mars and Jupiter. And we're going to talk about that more in future cosmic updates. You can find them on my page, so be sure to subscribe and follow me on social media. Um, and then you will also get specific videos just for my Patreon peeps. So if you want to check me out there, um, more updates on that to come as well. But this aspect between Mars and Jupiter is a really nice like rejuvenating energy to focus on the good things that are coming in the future and being able to really recognize how to put those plans in play and working with um, our soul family to culminate this opportunity for our communities. Um, and so this energy is very beautiful and harmonious and I believe it becomes exact on the 17th. Yeah, the 16th, we have that um, exact Mars trine Jupiter. More to come on that, but that energy is going to be present during this moon as well. So with everything this year, <laughs> we have that Aquarian energy of Saturn and Jupiter. And so the future is going to be very active in our minds and something that we'll be um, initiating and planning for during this new moon as well. How we show up in the in the future, how we connect to ourselves and how that connects to our communities and how we're interacting and networking within our soul families to really make this um, equitable shift in the future. Um, so all of those things are present here during this um during this moon. So again, planets inside of planet cycles, or I'm sorry, cycles inside of cycles as we move through this new moon, but new moon, Aries, new zodiac year, and just a lot of fresh energy that's going to be coming. As we move into the end of the year, the energies or into the end of the month, the energy is going to cool off. We have planets moving into Taurus. Um, Mars is going to move into Cancer. We're going to talk about all that on future updates. So again, be sure to subscribe and find me on social media so that you can be aware. Astrology for awareness. And um, yeah, so let me know how you feel about this moon. And if you have any questions and we can chat further about it, I am um, always here to help. <laughs> so yeah happy moon um there was one thing that I wanted to make sure that I talked about I don't know but let's go back and just retouch on Mars retrograde and how it's going to activate so think six months seven months eight months yeah more like eight months think like eight months back to when Mars was retrograding Think about where you felt halted, where you haven't been able to kind of move forward and now actively seek the awareness that we're moving forward in those things. So let me know if that resonates for you. Um, I love to hear from you guys and chat with you more and we'll talk soon. Thanks so much and I'll see you later.